It is our pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for today, Reagan Morris, class of 1999. Reagan is the vice president of Card Channels at Capital One Financial Group here in Richmond. In her current role, she is responsible for leading the Walmart launch and, and conversion for customer channels, leading the horizontal supplier operations team, and leading the content center organization that supports the customer resiliency collections recoveries business. As a part of this role, Reagan oversees the domestic and international supplier footprint of nearly 4,500 agents, as well as an internal team of nearly 1,800 agents who support customer resiliency. Most recently, Reagan was accountable for integrating Capital One's acquisition of world's foremost bank, banking subsidiary for Cabela's, into the card business. She has also been accountable for overseeing the operations of the 20 plus partners in Capital One's co-brand co -brand and PLCC portfolios. Prior to her current role in card, in card channels, Reagan held a variety of program management, customer experience, and strategy roles across technology and operations in both Capital One's card and commercial bank businesses. Before joining Capital One in 2004, Reagan served as a business process and technology consultant where she implemented large system integrations and business process improvement efforts across a number of companies in the financial services industry. Reagan was a leadership studies major with minors in classical civiliz civilizations and ancient Greek language. She currently serves as one, as one of the Jepson School's executive board of advisors and previously served on the Jepson Alumni Corps for six years, serving as a chair or co-chair of the group for three of those years. She is also a member of the Board of Directors for the University of Richmond Alumni Association in the downtown Richmond YMCA. Emma and I are so pleased to invite Reagan Morris to the stage to share her insights and reflections about a Jepson education as we are about to embark on our post-graduation endeavors. Thank you, Julie and Emma. If I'd realized that whole introduction was going to be spoken, I might have sent in the short form. Uh, so it is so amazing to be here today. I graduated 20 years ago this weekend. Uh, and I will tell you, everyone who's graduating, like I know everyone's going to say this to you, but it really does go in the blink of an eye. I'm, I'm you know, sitting here thinking about when I was on the other side of this podium. Uh, and uh, it's an amazing experience. Um, my graduation experience is a little hazy. Um, I was the commencement speaker at graduation, which was amazing, except like literally I remember nothing about graduation. Uh, so take it from me, um, pause and close your eyes and think and remember and reflect because it's a great memory. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, offer my congratulations uh, to everyone here, to all the graduates, um, but also to the families and the friends who have offered encouragement and support during your more than two decade journey to get to this weekend. It's a commonly held misconception that everything you need to know in life you learn in kindergarten. Sure, some of the lessons forged early in our childhood, like sharing, playing nicely with friends, cleaning up our own mess, provide an important foundation for fitting into polite society. But as I reflect on the 35 years I have spent learning and living post-kindergarten, I realize that the three most important things that I, of lessons in my life, the power of service, the power of reflection, and the power of thought, those lessons I learned in Jepson Hall. First, Jepson taught me the power of service. I still remember the day that I was introduced to the concept of servant leadership. It was early in the semester of Dr. Tom Wren's Histories and Theories class, and we were learning about the relationship between leaders and followers. The fact that Robert Greenleaf's essay on servant leadership was placed on page 18 of Dr. Wren's more than 500-page tome on leadership should have been my first indication that this was going to be a foundational concept of the curriculum. The concept that Dr. Wren introduced that day, that a leader is a servant first, whose purpose is to ensure that other people's needs are being served, became the foundation of my leadership journey and gave me the language that I continue to use today as I share my leadership story. Through the practice as service, as a path to leadership, I learned to live a life of moral consequence. 
I learned that who I am is more important than what I do. I learned that it's my character and not my career that defines me. And most importantly, the, this concept helped me connect my life's purpose to a motto that I adopted from accounting professor Dr. Joe Ben Hoyle, to do good first and worry about saving the world later. Second, Jepson taught me about the power of reflection. One of the most important gifts I learned at Jepson was that reflection and self-awareness are critical skills of a leader. This, con this concept was introduced to me by Mary Sue Terry, a former Attorney General of Virginia and a visiting professor at Jepson who taught my section of leading individuals. In this course, Ms. Terry required us to keep a journal throughout the semester, sometimes asking us to write freely and other times requiring us to respond to formative questions like what are your values and describe turning points in your lives. This was pretty heavy stuff for a class of first semester seniors whose focus was otherwise enjoying the last year of college and figuring out what life would look like after graduation. The course culminated in a mini page journal, journal entry that told the story of my life and forced me to reflect on who made me what I am, where my demons are hiding, and how I can use those insights to be a better leader. I was surprised when I received my journal back, and in lieu of a grade, because let's be honest, who can really grade somebody else's journal? Mrs. Terry responded with a handwritten, single-spaced, three-page essay that was clairvoyant in its advice to me. In one section, she wrote, and I quote here, what you may be addressing are two realities. One, that you are an innately gifted leader, and two, that you have the potential capacity to allow your gifts to be used in ways that cause you to lose balance in your life. Be careful not to lose yourself in service of others. Those words struck as much of a chord with me uh, today as they did when I first read them more than 20 years ago. And they also remind me that much of, I, of who I am as a leader was formed at a very early age and that employing a regular practice of self-reflection and mild mindfulness will help me continue to make progress in my journey toward leadership. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the Jepson curriculum challenged me to think critically about the world I engage in, to challenge what I see that isn't right, and to lead toward a better future. Never in my lifetime has our world needed competent and ethical leadership more than it does today. At times, I feel trapped in an eddy of 24-hour news cycles of unrelenting Twitter feeds and ever-present fake news. And while my first instinct is to bury my head in the sand and ignore that noise, Jepson has taught me a better way. Jepson's curriculum advances the nation's critical study in leadership and in so doing, arms its students with a modern-day arsenal to fight back against the crisis of leadership described by Dr. James McGregor Burns more than 40 years ago. This crisis, Dr. Byrne quotes, is the mediocrity and irresponsibility of so many of the men and women in power. With more than 1,500 alumni worldwide, Jepson is molding a generation of leaders who are prepared to understand the challenges of our world and to engage ethically and effectively in society. And so as we come together today to welcome a new cadre of citizen leaders, I wish to offer a few final thoughts uh, and pieces of advice to all of the graduates. You will be offered a ton of advice. There will be a heap. So just put this on the, on the heap, the advice I offered you today, and think about it later. First, everyone knows it is important to be kind to others. Uh, but I would argue that it is imperative to be kind to yourself. When those voices, which are inevitable, of self-doubt enter your head, choose not to listen to them. Be kind to yourself first. I also encourage you to approach the world you're about to enter into with curiosity and not with judgment. You are no, undoubtedly going to face all kinds of people who think differently than you. And when you do, argue like you're right, but listen like you're wrong. Share your privilege. The privilege of this education, the privilege of the friends and family that are here with you today, the privilege of this community that surrounds you. Think, reflect, serve. 
And always remember to do good first and worry about saving the world later. Thank you.